Hello, CS 345, 545 AI class students. I am Professor Michael Glass, and this recording serves as an introduction to um, the topic of AI and the AI class, the a kind of framing, a kind of contextualizing of what, what happens in AI what an AI class might be about. Um, and it, it, it won't be long, and this recording serves as a kind of substitute for the um, introductory lecture that I gave in person. The main question, of course, is what is artificial intelligence? And the definition that um, we tend to use is really informal. It is um, getting a computer to undertake some task that seems to involve intelligence um, or cognition or a brain. And that definition is kind of imprecise. I mean, seems to involve a brain. Um, it's served the field really well and it has also had um, one major difficulty. So the reason it served the field really well is that it gives you permission to investigate pretty much anything you don't know how to do with a computer. And I'll give you some good examples of AI. Um, one might be finding a route, like with using your GPS device to get a route from here to another city. Um, that is the kind of thing where um, straightforward computer algorithms don't do a very good job at. They, you know, every time you come to a, an intersection in a road, there are multiple alternatives. Each of those alternatives will find more intersections you know, each intersection typically has three three possible places you could go. Um, so each of them will have three more, so then you have nine more paths, and then again you'll end up with what? <laughs> okay. Um, so trying out all possible paths, going through a graph of, you know, cities connected to cities by roads or roads connected to roads with intersections. Um, Trying out all possible paths is something that computers know how to do. People can program computers to rather mechanically do that. But when people try to find a path, if I hand you a map or I put you in a car and I say, All right, your job is to go from here to Purdue University in West Lafayette, um, the intense a number amount of computations and you know paths to be considered and you know picking a reasonably good one is something that people don't need all that computation they they come up with a pretty good route without trying all the possibilities um, and what's the difference well you know for most of computer history that's an AI thing. People can do that. People can come up with a reasonable route, maybe not the optimal route, but people can come up with a reasonable route without doing, you know, crunching, you know, 10 to the big number of possible routes and paths and everything else. So that being able to pick a plausible route is an AI task. Um, so many things which we can do with computers were AI tasks because people knew how to do them and computers didn't. And that gives the AI people license to work on that problem and call it AI. So it served the field really well. It also means that when you go to an AI class and look at what's going on in there, the things we might teach, it tends to be a wide variety of things without a single thread that ties them together. The downside is, you've probably just noticed, 
that you probably didn't think of the GPS route finding as an AI problem. When people talk about the great things we can do with AI now, like, you know, famously ChatGBT or deep fakes, um, you know, you didn't think of including finding a route from here to Purdue to drive as among them as an AI thing. And the reason is we now have algorithms that can do that. <laughs> so there's no longer an AI problem. <laughs> and, you know, once you've figured out how to get a computer to do it and people, a next generation of people comes along and they're accustomed to having compu uh, computers do it, they no longer view it with that lens of this is a task which requires some intelligence that we don't know how to get a computer to do. So that's sort of the downside of the definition. But I will still stand by that definition of what is artificial intelligence, and that will be the guiding theme of this class. And it does mean that some of the things that we do will not look to you like AI, even though historically they are. And the methods that we use to accomplish some of those tasks are methods that were devised by AI people. The, um, and the other thing to know is that everything which comes under the heading of machine learning, and that's all your data mining stuff, a lot of your data science stuff, a lot of your analytics stuff, everything which comes under the rubric of machine learning was at one point artificial intelligence. Because learning, you know, looking at data and abstracting rules from the data, abstracting, you know, um, was um, something that people could do that computers couldn't. So, according to the definition, that's AI. It was the AI people who came up with most of what we now think of as machine learning and data mining topics. There was even a, uh, a famous professor, he was at Yale, and he, you know, many years ago, he declared that he was going to no longer graduate any PhD students unless they worked on machine learning, because to him that was the most important AI problem. And some of those students did the kinds of things which, you know, we now think of as, you know, in your data mining class. Um, but at that time, getting machines to learn anything from data was, you know, a, a new thing and an imitation of an intelligence. So a fair amount of what we're going to do in this class is going to be machine in one way or another machine learning. Everything that a neural network does is machine learning. Um, and another thing that makes AI, machine learning is something that's a thread that runs through all of AI or, or much of AI. Another thing is that there are certain methods that, ways of approaching problems and methods of approaching them, that are also fairly common to AI applications. Um, a really well-known one is uh, called uh, guided search. The way that finding the path, you know, the driving path works is it starts with an algorithm which potentially could search through that exponentially growing list of all possible routes and, and branches, but that algorithm is then guided by some heuristic, a heuristic which might actually look similar to what a human would do. Um, and that heuristic will, when it gets to a fork in the road, it will say, um, all right, well, what's the one that the, the branch that's most likely to, that's more in the direction of getting to me to my goal? And it keeps track of paths which you haven't taken so that if you discover at some point that um, this path, which looked like it was getting closer, really ended up at a dead end or taking you away, you can then go back and look at some of those partially completed paths that you were considering before. So that's a kind of heuristic that you can use that optimizes the brute force search algorithms that were easy to program. And it turns out that that method of, of putting some kind of 
easy brute force algorithm together with some heuristic evaluation thing um, turns out to be extremely powerful uh, in terms of doing AI tasks. Chess playing programs, similarly, typically there is a heuristic in there which is judging the way a uh, you know the the, the, the value of, of a chessboard at any given time, and the there's a search algorithm which you know you could move this piece, you could move this piece, you could move the other piece, you play ahead this way, play ahead that way, like that. There are algorithms, what's called minimax, to that that. Uh, could, could do the entire search if you needed to. Um, and there are also heuristics to um, judge the uh, board and, and, and judge you know, the direction of, of, a, of, a, of a move. The most successful chess programs actually combine neural network heuristic judgments with um, those old-fashioned searching and things like that. Um, and, um, and those are the ones, that's the most successful chess programs. So that notion is one of the several notions that is common to a lot of AI algorithms, a lot of AI programs, um, even though the tests themselves are, in some sense, all over the map. Anyway, um, so that's our introduction to what is AI and our you know, guiding principle for what you're going to see in an AI class this semester.